In this video, we'll be providing an introduction to relational databases, along with some of the key concepts such as primary, foreign and secondary keys, entity relationship modeling, normalization and indexing. So let's start with the most simple question. What actually is a database? Well, it's nothing more than an organized collection of data. Organizing data into a database allows for easy adding, modification, deletion, and searching of data. We've been organizing information using paper-based filing systems and databases for long before the mass use of computing technology. With the use of technology becoming much more common, databases began to move from paper-based systems to computer-based ones. An electronic database offers several useful benefits. It's obviously now much easier and quicker to add, delete, update and modify data. It's easier to back up and make copies and they can be accessed and used by multiple people at the same time from different locations. Here's an example of how information about a school might be stored in a database. Note how the data is stored in a table, which we sometimes call an entity or a file. The table contains records, which we sometimes call rows and tuples. And the table also contains fields that we can call columns and attributes. Now the three terms highlighted in bold here, table, records and fields, are the terms which the exam board will use in your examination paper. This is an example of what we call a flat file database. It contains only a single table. It can be created very easily using either a database or a simple spreadsheet program. And it's often saved as a comma separated values file, a CSV. Flat file databases are very simple, but they're quick to set up. They require little expertise to maintain and they are suitable for storing small amounts of data. Typical uses could include storing contact details, a small product database, or maintaining a personal database at home for a game or music collection. Beyond the most trivial of applications, however, a flat file database can become very inefficient. Even in this simple example, we have a lot of repetitive data. All this data needs to be stored and of course, repetitive data takes up more space in the database. As the data grows, the situation gets worse. If we only used flat file databases, they would quickly take up far too much unnecessary space, they'd be slow to query, and they'd become increasingly difficult to maintain. It would be better to split this information into multiple tables. By splitting out and creating this tutor group table, you can see we've removed a great deal of repeating data. Of course, we now need a way to link these tables together. Now, as humans, we can do this instinctively. So if I ask the question, which students are in tutor group A12, it's easy. I simply look at A12 in the tutor group table. I find their 10E. I jump over visually to the student table and I read across each row that has 10E and I can give you the answer. However, a database needs an actual link to infer this logic. This link between tables is known as a relationship. The way we draw the relationship tells us how the tables are related to each other. we can see that one tutor group can contain many students. If we read the relationship in the other direction, it reads as many students can belong to one tutor group. So this is known as a one to many relationship. We've taken our simple flat file database and turned it into a relational database. You will notice that we need a common field in both tables for the relationship to work. 
So here the tutor group field appears in both tables. In a database, we should also make sure that each record within a table is uniquely identifiable. Consequently, there must be at least one field in each record that is guaranteed to be unique. And this field is known as the primary key. So the student ID field is the primary key of the student table because it's a unique field. Tutor group is the primary key of the tutor group table. If a table has a relational link to another table, we also have what are known as foreign keys. Notice how the primary key field from the tutor group table has become the foreign key field in the student table when we create the relational link. When designing a relational database and linking tables, the relationships can come in one of three forms, one-to-one, one-to-many, one -to -many, and many-to-many. -many. We can sketch out the relationships between the tables using what's known as an Entity Relationship Diagram, ERD, or Entity Relationship Modeling. When we do this, tables are represented by boxes with the name of the table inside each box. So here is a one-to-one -one relationship between the student and the student planner tables. Now, depending whether we read this from left to right or right to left, we can say one student has one planner or one student planner belongs to one student. Here is a one-to-many relationship between the tutor group and students table. Again, we say one tutor group contains many students or many students belong to one tutor group. And here is a many-to-many -many relationship between the student and teacher table. We can read this as one student can be taught by many teachers or one teacher can teach many students. Although this last relationship makes logical sense, it is not considered to be a good database design. Resolving many-to-many -many relationships is discussed in more details in our video on database normalization. So try it yourself. Turn this flat file database into a relational one. So remember, you have to split this into two tables and create some kind of appropriate relational link between them. Identify a primary key for both tables and identify any appropriate foreign keys that might be required so that link will work. Pause the video a second and when you think you've got it, unpause and check your answer. So there you go, you can see we've pulled out the repeating data for the actual showroom. So we're saying a showroom of which we currently have three can have many cars associated with it. And we're saying many cars can belong to a showroom. We didn't need to add a primary key for the car table because we already had one. Car registration is unique. And the car showroom field, the showroom table, became our primary key. Showroom linked back as the foreign key in the car table to make the one-to-many relationship work. Now, a database is only useful if we can query it quickly to retrieve information. The database automatically maintains an index of primary keys so that a specific primary key can be located quickly and easily. The index provides the position of each record according to its primary key, and this makes the retrieval of records that are referenced by the index much, much quicker, as items do not need to be searched sequentially. You can also specify one or more secondary key fields to be indexed. Now you would do this for fields that are often used as search criteria. 
Say you need to search for a student in this database. It's quite unlikely that a parent would phone up and remember the student ID number. It's far more likely that they'll remember and you'll search on the student's surname. So you could create a secondary index based on the surname field. The surname field then becomes a secondary key in the student table. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What are the key terms associated with databases?